So collagen supplements are getting a ton of hate right now on the interwebs because of a recent study that was published that suggests that it may not be as beneficial as we originally thought to joint health. However, instead of diving down that massive rabbit hole in this video, I thought it'd be a better idea to outline one of the main reasons that I personally take it, which is its little known benefits to sleep quality. Now, there isn't any direct evidence for this quite yet. However, because collagen protein is by far the most abundant source of the amino acid glycine, and because glycine has an overwhelming amount of evidence to support its benefits to sleep quality, uh, I thought this might be a topic worth discussing. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. Now, when it comes to glycine, glycine is considered to be the simplest stable amino acid known to man and is technically considered to be a proteogenic amino acid, which simply means uh, that it's involved in the production of protein in the body. However, it's also considered to be a non-essential amino acid. And the reason for this is that your body can create glycine from other substrates in the body, namely serine and tetrahydrofolate, which is the biologically active form of folate, otherwise known as vitamin B9. However, because of this, individuals with one of many genetic MTHFR mutations may be at a particular risk of deficiency because of their inability to properly metabolize folate and therefore may not be able to effectively produce glycine. But with that being said, your body can also synthesize glycine from threonine, choline, and hydroxyproline, though it's not exactly clear to what extent these molecules are practically involved in the production of glycine. Now, even though your body can create roughly three grams of glycine per day, it is estimated through several lines of reasoning that your body needs uh, upwards of 15 grams of glycine per day to meet biological needs. And because of this, it's estimated that uh, your body requires uh, 12 grams of dietary glycine per day in order to just meet basic bodily functions, which is why uh, some nutritional researchers are actually arguing for glycine to be reclassified as an essential amino acid, or at the very least, a conditionally essential amino acid. Now, when it comes to the roles of glycine in the body, glycine appears to be intricately involved in four very specific functions. One is that it is extremely involved in the synthesis of collagen protein in connective tissues. Two is that along with cysteine and glutamate, it is a necessary substrate for glutathione production. Three is that along with taurine, glycine is necessary for the conjugation of bile salts and is therefore intricately involved in lipid metabolism. And then the fourth role is that it plays a direct role as both a neurotransmitter itself and as a substrate for neurotransmitter production. Now, some of the first studies ever performed on isolated glycine were performed as far back as 1968. And then up until 1974, most of the studies performed on glycine merely had to do with the kinetics of its absorption. However, in 1971, it was discovered to exist in the spinal cord, and because of this, was thought to play a possible role in neurological function. However, since that time, it has been fairly well established that glycine is in fact an endogenously produced neurotransmitter with its own exclusive receptors that are found in the central nervous system in a similar manner to things like serotonin and dopamine. Now, when it comes to the effects of glycine supplementation, there do appear to be several different effects from supplementing with glycine. However, by far the most well-established effect of glycine supplementation is its benefits to sleep, in part because of its integral role as an endogenously produced neurotransmitter. In 2006, a study was performed in 19 women where the researchers of that study concluded that, quote, these results suggest that the safety of glycine is relatively high and that oral glycine administration produces good subjective feelings after awakening from sleep in humans who are dissatisfied with their sleep quality. And though the results of this study were pretty vague, another study published the following year drew extremely similar conclusions where the authors noted that, quote, the present PSG results from subjects who had been continuously experiencing unsatisfactory sleep demonstrated that ingestion of three grams of glycine before bedtime significantly shortened the latency to sleep onset and the latency to short wave sleep emergence without change in sleep architecture. These objective PSG data correlated with the subjectively observed improved sleep quality such as satisfaction with sleep, a shortened latency to falling asleep, 
and sleep efficacy. And furthermore, another study published five years later demonstrated that, quote, in the first half of this study, the ingestion of three grams of glycine before bedtime ameliorated daytime fatigue under modest sleep restriction conditions. These improvements were observed on the first day, but not on the third day of three consecutive sleep restricted days. Additionally, performance, which was evaluated by a psychomotor vigilance test, was also improved on both the first and third day. Thus, glycine improved subjective parameters such as fatigue only on day one. However, objective parameters such as psychomotor vigilance were improved on both day one and day three. And then a review study published in the same year went on to explore the mechanisms of action in rodents where they concluded that, quote, we found that orally administered glycine acts on NMDA receptors in the central nervous system and decreases central body temperature resulting in an improvement in sleep quality. And so it's interesting to note that Literally every single study that has ever been performed on the effects of glycine on sleep parameters has come to the exact same conclusion through one line of reasoning or another, and that is that glycine supplementation does in fact improve sleep quality. However, the exact mechanisms of action are what appear to be most interesting here. For one, through several other secondary lines of research, it appears as though glycine has a direct inhibitory action through its own glycine receptor. And because glycine glycine receptors carry out inhibitory actions, it makes sense that glycine would have a direct inhibitory action in the central nervous system and improve sleep quality. However, glycine receptors also appear to be co-localized with GABA-A receptors, which is an even more potent inhibitory neurotransmitter system, which means that not only is glycine initiating in inhibition through the glycine receptor, but also through the GABA receptors. However, where things get interesting is that glycine also appears to be a coagonist or a coactivator of the NMDA receptor as outlined by that study that was published in 2012. Now, the reason this is interesting is that NMDA receptors are technically a receptor site of the most stimulatory neurotransmitter in the entire central nervous system, glutamate. Now, because of this, you would assume that glycine may have some stimulatory properties to it in the central nervous system. However, this may not actually be the case, and the reason for that is even though NMDA receptors are technically a receptor site of glutamate, the, the stimulatory nature of NMDA receptors appear to be slightly more um, agnostic uh, than the other receptor sites of glutamate. And the reason I say this is that the most well-established role of NMDA receptors is not general stimulation, but that of its role in memory consolidation. But as this study points out, NMDA receptors also appear to be absolutely essential for sleep quality as well. When you give rodents drugs that directly activate the NMDA receptor, it doesn't cause stimulation, but it actually greatly improves their sleep quality. And to some degree, this actually does make sense. Uh, memory consolidation typically does occur during um, REM sleep, and so you would assume that a neurotransmitter system, or at least a receptor system, uh, that helps to um, agonize and activate the consolidation of memory in the central nervous system would also improve sleep quality. And this is what we do appear to to see uh, with glycine. However, what's even more interesting is that in this study published in 2006, the authors noted that nine grams of glycine given at any point in the day did not induce drowsiness at all. And intuitively, this doesn't make a ton of sense if you think about it. How does a, um, a neurotransmitter or more specifically a dietary amino acid that helps to induce sleep how does it not cause drowsiness? And this doesn't make sense until you consider that dietary glycine in particular doesn't cross the blood-brain barrier very well. And so what's thought to be going on here is that dietary glycine, when ingested, is actually more so used for other bodily functions, things like glutathione production, things like collagen production, as well as the production of bile salts, and doesn't, again, readily cross the blood-brain barrier and can't cannot be used uh, for the production of neurotransmitters.
neurotransmitters and can't directly bind to the receptors in the central nervous system. However, because an increase in overall glycine intake is happening and is um, being able to be shuttled to those other bodily functions, it's thought uh, that there is a greater pool in the central nervous system uh, that is derived from other substrates such as serine that's available for the production of glycine when it's actually needed like the evening time. And so when it comes to the timing of glycine intake, it may not even matter when you consume glycine just so long as you're increasing your daily general intake of glycine that can be used for daily general bodily functions. And because your body needs roughly 15 grams of glycine per day but can create roughly three grams per day, it is estimated that you need roughly 12 grams of dietary glycine per day in order to meet uh, bodily functions. And by far the best dietary source, at least in my opinion, well, not just in my opinion, objectively speaking, the best dietary source of glycine is collagen. Now, you can consume collagen through other dietary means, things like pork rinds, uh, things like bone broth, as well as the connective tissues like the ligaments and tendons uh, that are attached to uh, different muscle meats. Um, those do contain some collagen. However, the most targeted way of increasing your collagen intake is simply by just taking a collagen supplement. Now, you can also just simply supplement with a glycine supplement. However, because collagen protein also contains uh, several other beneficial amino acids, namely proline and hydroxyproline, I am a much bigger fan of consuming collagen as a means of one, increasing glycine uh, intake for the purpose of improving sleep as well as some other um, metabolic markers. However, it also provides some extra um, hydroxyproline and proline as well. And because 20 to 30 grams of a collagen supplement will provide roughly four to six grams of glycine. A collagen supplement is a really good way and a fantastic way to add some extra glycine into your diet. Now you can also get glycine from things like whey protein as well as muscle meats. However, one of the added benefits of using a collagen supplement is that uh, they're typically hydrolyzed, which means that they absorb a little bit better than food sources and other dietary sources of collagen. So if you guys are interested in checking out a collagen supplement, uh, my friend Derek over at More Plates, More Dates has uh, recently released a uh, fantastically formulated collagen supplement uh, that also contains some type 2 collagen, which may have some further benefits to joint health, as well as some hyaluronic acid for a fantastic price. So um, again, if you guys are interested in supplementing with collagen, uh, make sure to check out the link in the description. Uh, but other than that, also make Make sure to check out the full length video that I've done on collagen as well as all the other cool stuff that I'm affiliated down in the description. But other than that, I will see you guys next time.